Hey everyone and welcome to 121 in Flux, I am Peter, that is Connor and we talk about movies on this show, old movies typically, sometimes more recent than others, but uh, we go to the past and on this episode we are going to be discussing The Exterminating Angel from 1962, it is a Spanish film, obviously we'll start spoiler free as we always do and we're going to spoilers halfway through. Uh, what is the movie about? It is about a group of rich characters who for some reason one night at a dinner party, they go into the saloon and they can't leave. There's no physical force stopping them from leaving, but they just can't leave. Anytime they think about leaving, they just don't want to. They just don't leave. They're trapped there. And there they remain, and that's the plot of the movie. <laughs> Pretty much. It's this. It's the ultimate bottle movie in that sense. It kind of, it kind of is. It's almost entirely in this room. Uh, you know, barring a few scenes at the start and a couple at the end, it's all in this room. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is a, a classic that appears on a lot of best of lists and things like that. This was one I'd been intending on watching for a while, so we thought we'd give it a try uh, and discuss our thoughts and feelings. Connor, did you enjoy The Exterminating Angel? I did. I found it fascinating. Fascinating? Why was it fascinating? Yeah. Oh, it does all sorts of things that I found intriguing and just the, the overall themes that it deals with as well as the way they're presented. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not a film where you have all the answers to. It's, it's very amb- mm. amb- uh, ambitious. It's very vague. Uh, ambiguous was what I was going for. But I, th- I thought I, I was. It morphed into ambitious for some reason. But it's very, it's, it's very ambiguous as to what is happening, what's going on. Uh, because of the title, you kind of assume, okay, there's an angelic force maybe that's doing this, that's causing whatever this is. Uh, uh, I did a little bit of reading afterwards, and I've got maybe a, a few more ideas based on like themes and things like that, as to just sort of, ext- mostly the ending. The ending was the thing that I didn't quite get. Okay, so I've done no reading on this. But we'll, we'll so get we'll get into that in spoilers, obviously. We're not going to talk about that before. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I say I don't understand it. Like, I didn't need to understand why things were happening, but like the rest of the movie, the bulk of the movie, I thought thematically, I knew why things were happening. Like, I I got what the movie was saying. I got what it was exploring. The ending, I didn't quite get there. Like, I wasn't sure why. Yeah, it's like this, uh, just just some extra things that do, do murky the waters a little. Yeah, because uh, very much what the, what the bulk of the movie is. It's it's all these rich characters, and one of the key plot points at the start is that all the servants, because this house has a cook, it has various maids and that kind of thing. They all, kind of the same way that all the all the rich guests don't want to leave, they all want to leave at the start. They all sort of vacate, with the exception of the head servant who stays around. The rest of them all leave at the start. And it's all these rich people who are trapped in the room. And once they're in there, it's basically how society crumbles and it's it explores this kind of thing. They, they get more savage, they get desperate because they can't get out. It's, uh, it's pretty much rich Lord of the Flies. It, which yeah. is... Kind, of, kind of appropriate that we're doing this this week because in the news, have you seen the, the the fire festival stuff, which has been described as Rich Lord of the Flies. <laughs> uh, I, I vaguely saw something about it being like this awful, and they were they were, they were served like really simple food, given despite the fact they'd paid thousands and thousands of dollars for yeah, tickets. Yeah, yeah, it was like twelve thousand dollars, and and they've got no luggage, they've got no cash, they yeah. can't get home. Yeah, uh, I think it's that. I I also. St- looked at it as an examination of like uh of of uh society as as of culture because it's, it's these because i think the me- ultimate metaphor for these the, the movie is that these people are trapped by their social class yeah it's, it's their own conventions that that force them into the situation and keep them there yeah uh but even the way it breaks down the, the way that they are trapped because their entire outlook in life, the way they treat others, the way they treat the poorer people. Because at the start of the, the movie, you see the uh, like the the wife that's running the, the party, so like she's like downright like mean to all the servants and stuff like that. I mean, like th- this is like them being forced to sort of live through to a harder, harsher time. Yeah, you get trapped. it. The intention is to teach them a lesson. Yeah, yeah, uh, and so that's kind of what happens, and the, they break down. At first, it's like it's just kind of like, why can't we leave? And then. But soon that becomes the norm. They they just accept that they're trapped and they have to figure things out. They they look they can't get food. They can't get water. Those are, those are big plot points that come into it, and that's kind of how the movie goes. Uh, I liked it as well. Uh, I I think it, I like bottle movies, which helps. I think if I had a criticism, is that there's so many characters that, that there's definitely some where I I can't even. I mean I can't name most of them anyway. But like I think there's some that were there that I couldn't even describe what they are who they were. 
I agree, and I think some of them do suffer than that. But at the same time, I feel like you can't have many less characters in this scenario because you want to. The whole point of it is showing a reflection of society and the way it crumbles. So you need oh, enough yeah. there to showcase it. I, I just think, I, admittedly, I think obviously it being black and white even makes this even worse because because uh, sometimes visuals can just help distinguish some characters. Whereas here, you know, the, all the men are all wearing tuxedos. God damn it! <laughs> like it's really hard to discern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who's who? Most of the ladies are wearing very similar dresses, so unless they have different hair color, like the doctor character has glasses and he's sort of tall and lanky, so it was easier to. But it, it, there were so many characters, and they only get so much time each. There's some obviously get more time than others, and they're, they're more full fledged, and you remember them. But uh, I, so I I would give the, that criticism to it, but I actually did like the just the, the survival element of it. It's a, it's a really weird because I like survival movies where you know characters are in like a, a harsh environment and they have to somehow get out or survive or that that kind of thing, and this is like a really weird thing where it's just a room in a mansion, yeah, <laughs> and they yeah. they can't get out and they have to just try and make do with what's in there. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that part of it. I enjoyed some of the the, the symbols. There's, a couple of the characters start dreaming at some point and that gives us some really interesting sequences. There's a horror s sequence with a with a hand. That's all I'll say yeah, without spoilers, yeah. uh, but I really like that sequence, uh, and that was cool. I, I do I do think it's a movie that I'll maybe appreciate more in repeat viewings because I'll maybe analyze some of the some of the, some of the themes a little bit more and see maybe what other things represent. Especially now that I have, I think I have a better understanding of what the ending is. Uh, right, I, I do appreciate how a lot of the themes are actually represented in the technical way it's presented as well. There's lots of technical things that the movie does that actually tie into the themes that it's talking about and, mm. and the plot, which I found quite interesting. You don't see that too often, I don't think. Go on, then. Describe some of these technical... Uh, so, some of the, the, the repetition in the script, mm. which is a you know it's a technical thing that's used just to... It throws you off at first. It's like, okay, this is weird. What's going on? Uh, I mean, the scene very early on when they're all entering the mansion. But yeah. then repetition actually plays a key part in the plot later on. It does. It does, and that's one of the more ambiguous bits as well. Is like why that works. Like I don't yeah. know if I have a set answer as to why that actually. Uh, and anyway, again, spoilers. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Here's here's uh, something I liked as well. Is I like that it, examining the even in this sort of rich upper class lifestyle. There's like there's tribalism, right? And obviously, you expect to end their harsh circumstance once they've been here for a few days and whatnot. But I liked it even before when we're setting up the movie at the start and they're actually at the dinner table in the dining hall. There's already like tribal sort of little elements. There's like little groups of like three or four of them and they're gossiping about someone else yeah, at the table. Yeah, they're all highly opinionated about the, the rest of them, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Which is uh, kind of what I think of with rich upper class. You know, I feel like that's yeah. that's the norm, at least in my mind. And, and it's, all, it's all superficial. It's all... Like what, when it all comes down to it, when, all, when they're trapped in that room and they can't get out, like eventually, like all your all your rich, like expensive vases, your your fancy ornaments, and everything else you've got in there, none of it's worth a goddamn thing because you you just want food and water, <laughs> like yeah, and it, it kind of points those kind of things out. And obviously, they start to turn on each other, and that tribalism becomes like a more serious thing. But also other things like certain characters go a little bit crazy, certain characters just want to commit suicide, certain characters want to do this and that. Uh, the animalistic nature of people kind of comes out. And it's kind of showing you that the worst comes out when you stay in your own bubble, kind of thing. And like, it's it's doing a lot with it seems. Yeah, I, I think one of my other criticisms would be that maybe it doesn't go quite far enough in the way it explores some of them. Hmm. But uh, again, you know, like this is kind of a, a version of Lord of the Flies, which that that went really extreme. I feel this is a maybe it's just because it's rich people, but it's more subdued than that. Even even in this scenario. Yeah. I... I don't know if I need to, to go much further, but I, I do see what you mean. Like, it, I, I think it had to be a gradual build. They weren't going to just turn into savages overnight. Like, it had to yeah, be... Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's, even if they don't act on some of the things that it could have got to, it's like there's not even really any discussion and contemplation of these things. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe that's something... I, that, that could have been good but I, I think the director wanted to keep it intentionally like something you interpret on your because he, he uh he's one of these directors who's like no i'm not telling you what it's about yeah. <laughs> like you, you think about that yourself you know he's pulling out david lynch basically uh and saying yeah no it's just whatever you interpret yourself uh so i, th I think that's interesting i i do know that uh like it 
so, some of the themes are based on some wars that went on uh, in the time period or further back uh, in, in Spanish history uh, mm. and maybe even Mexican history that, that the film's kind of talking about. Uh, so obviously that that effect is kind of to an extent lost on us. We, we're viewing this from our perspective in 2017 yeah. uh, and having not taken uh, like Spanish history, <laughs> I can't really yeah, speak yeah, to those things. I only know snippets of Spanish history. Yeah, uh, so our perspective is where we're coming from, but uh, nah. So yeah, I, I think it's a it's a pretty beautiful film for the most part. It it mm. w- one of my favorite shots actually is when uh, ever like because it's a big open doorway. It's not even it's not even a door. It's just like a it's just an entrance really, right? It's big and open. Yeah. They, and they can't like go past that. I love whenever the camera would pull back and you just see this from a distance. because they're literally in a box. Yeah, yeah. And you entrance. just sit on the outside and they're they're so close to the doors. Like yeah. all the edges, and they're just not quite through it. Yeah. So the whole idea they're trapped by their their social status is yeah. very. It's like the metaphors like screaming and, at you. And obviously, the state of the room disintegrates along with their mental states. And so th- these times where it pulls back, you really see it. Yeah. Otherwise, it, it does spend a lot of time in close ups, which it makes sense for the movie. It's maybe a, a less interesting visual style for a film because it just yeah. feels like it's constant close ups. Uh, or medium close-ups, whatever. You know, it's single character shots and two shots. It's very simple in that sense. Uh, but then you're in one room the entire time. Like, what, what fancy things do you want to do? And it does get fancy. Like the dream sequence I mentioned with the hand that gets really proper horror movie where it's yeah. really playing with the suspense of it. Uh, but that, that's kind of where. It's... So I, I think we should get into spoilers. I want to talk about uh, some some yeah details yeah let's and... do it. Right, so full spoilers from this put on for the exterminating angel. Uh, so. I want to talk about the ending because I think I think it reflects back in some of the things you might say about the rest of the movie. So okay. the end of the movie is like they eventually get out and they get out because they repeat their their actions on the, the first night where they they got trapped, mm. and that for some reason lets them out. It's almost like by admitting their pompousness they get out or something like that. Like I, I, yeah, it, it's being self aware of that they're, yeah. they're aware of what caused because obviously the whole thing was it was their social conventions where because no one said they were going to leave they were all like well we should stay. Yeah, and and it kind of led to this chain of events, and yeah. it's it's the recognition of that is the way I looked at it, where they were like, okay, we realise the problems we made by adhering to this so strictly. Yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning, of course, that everyone like we get a couple of scenes in the outside of the building where people know they're trapped inside, and they, it's the same thing for them; they can't get in. Like they are, they they can't go in, uh, and that that was part of uh, another thing to the, the theme was like the whole idea of the servants leaving, the idea that. The, them being so separate from the working class, like if they don't have the working class, they're actually they're desperate and they're alone and they're, they're hopeless. <laughs> they need the working I, class. I also appreciate that we did have these handful of scenes outside because up until the first one, it was really vague about how much time was passing. Like mm. it seemed to be going really quickly, and I wasn't sure if it was all in their minds how much time was going on. But the fact that then we saw these people outside and it was like rescue missions and stuff, it was like. Oh, okay, time yeah. is actually passing, and that that really cleared that up for me. Yeah, but that, the idea that them keeping separate and that without these people, without the people that you treat badly and you consider to be another class of people, without them, you're you're alone and you're trapped, and it's just you, like yeah. But uh, so the ending, uh, we see them in a church, a big church. Yes, and uh, you know, service happens, continues. And then we hear some bells ring and everyone's trapped in the church. Kept just the exact same way, where everyone wants to leave, but they can't. Uh, they, 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 just, they just keep turning around and saying, oh, I need to go back and get my bag. Yeah, yeah or, they, they all go to leave. And then you cut to like the, the priest and he's like, oh, well, we should go. And it's like, well, we'll wait for everyone else to go. We'll yeah. wait for them to all clear out. And then it cuts back to them at the doors and they're like, oh, actually, hang on. Yeah. And, but they're all sort of clumped up at the doors. It's a lot more people than it was in the room. Yeah, a lot more, yeah. And they're all clumped up. But what I think is interesting, and I didn't notice this, is that our main characters from the house weren't there anymore. They don't, they're they in the church during the service, but you don't see them at all during this last part. No, you don't. And I think and that, that is important because it's like... Because the way... When I, when I looked it up and I, I sort of seen what some of the, the, sort of the, the thoughts on this were, because I didn't really get what this church ending was going on about but it was like the poor people have the church the way the rich people have their mansion and this was also to show the poor people their own traps their own entrapment of society so the rich people leave because just like the servants left before for the mansion they don't belong there they're the ones that are outside uh, that's how i 
read it as well. It was the whole it, with the the way the the rich people got was they were aware of their social conventions. That's what kept them there in the first place. Mm. And and so with this church, it's their social conventions of uh, you know the idea of how many of them actually believe in going to church or how many are there just because that's what you're meant to do on that day. And and so it was like just a, 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 a social habit that some of them were doing, perhaps. Yeah, okay, well, because one of the things is uh, the idea is that there's an actual angel doing this, and uh, the, the angel itself is punishing and showing you the faults of your own society. And that's one of the theories is that the sheep being sent in, because we see the sheep going in at the end uh, yeah. into the church, just like so. But the thing with the, obviously in the mansion is we established that there was a bear and there was a couple of lambs around just because yeah because rich people have sheep and bears in their house. <laughs> yeah so when they wander in you don't think anything of it you just think oh that's just lucky they can cook that and obviously they, they cook the, the sheep and we see them breaking down the tables and stuff to make a little fire so they can cook the cook the lamb and, and i think that that was ended up being one of my little problems is that they never really considered cannibalism at any point because they just had the sheep so it never reached that point well this is the thing though i, I think the whole point is is that if the angel's doing this it's ensuring they can stay alive it doesn't actually mm. want them to die it, it wants them it's giving them the tools to survive but it wants them to learn something from the experience no, that uh, makes sense. and that's why there's more sheep going at the church at the end because like, oh, there's more people being more sheep yeah yeah yeah, yeah that uh, makes sense uh so that worked for me. I didn't completely get the church thing uh, when I finished watching it. I had to go and do a little bit of reading. Like, okay, what did, what did that ending mean? Because I'm confused. Because obviously outside there's like war going on, there's shooting, and there's like riots are breaking out in the streets. Yeah. Uh, but I, again, maybe that's the whole idea is that they they go to church because it's this semblance of safety. Like this is the one safety blanket we have in the world. And yeah, they're almost not confronting reality because yeah. they're just doing this instead. Because when we're inside the church, you have no idea this is going on outside. Yeah. It just looks like a normal day. And the funny thing is, is I think, despite the fact that it's you know an angel, I, I think it's actually been really critical of religion, or at least the way religion is used by people. Yes, definitely. Um, and I, I think that's an interesting thing to look at. Uh, but uh, so. You know, you could almost do a sequel where they're all in the church. <laughs> I don't know. It would, you could. It would probably be boring because it would just be the similar things. But maybe it would break into more, like, because there's more people, maybe it would get more hysterical and maybe it would yeah, break out into and, more and things. Maybe know. if you're in a church, instead of exploring, oh, this is the rich people and their conventions and break that down, you, you deal with the religion and break down and look at the themes from that perspective yeah, instead. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but I don't think you need it because you just need the one. And I think doing it to the rich people uh, is more effective because they feel... I think poor people, you feel like they're in danger more anyway, whereas rich people, you feel, oh, they're safe, they don't have as problems. But the truth yeah. is, is they're just as trapped by society's rules as uh, the poor people are, to an extent, yes. uh, and, and their conventions and what they do. Uh, so, I, I, And I think the fact that we've spoken so much about what the film means and the themes, and not really about characters all that much, shows you that this is a film about ideas, rather than a conventional movie where you sit down and you care about what X character's trying to accomplish. Yeah, because at no point are any characters you, you care about them or what they're doing or why. It's more, yeah. what does this serve in the larger narrative at all times that's in your mind? Yeah, because uh, cause obviously we have various characters. There's a, a widespread type, type of people here that we, we talk about. And uh, obviously one of the things that happens is that one of the older men, like, any, like when everyone's sleeping, he tries to sexually assault one of the women. And it's like things are getting more savage. And that that's like a sort of theme is that it's bringing out the worst in everyone. You know, there's there's the uh, the brother sister where the, the brother's always relying on the sister for things, and that's going on. There is, of course, the young couple who commit suicide that they're engaged to be married, and they commit suicide in the cupboard because yes. they they just can't take it anymore. They, they, they want to just be together, uh, and it just you know it's it's very dark. Like one of the old guys dies actually, just dies of old age and yeah, it, it's told us that he was ill anyway, and it seems to be when they. Because once they realise that they can't leave and they force themselves to try, they, they seem to get ill. Yeah. It, like, it comes over them and they're like, oh, I've got to sit down, I can't go any further. Yeah. And uh, I feel like maybe this is a, an effect on him. It's just because he was ill anyway and it just affected him worse. Yeah. No, I, I can see that. Obviously, there's, there's a woman there that's got cancer as well. There's there's a doctor who's kind of upstanding. We have the the sort of husband who's, whose house it is. Like, he... He he's very like the other. He's the one that everyone turns on. They're like, oh, we need to blame him because it's his house. Like he's the host. Yeah, he, he invited us. It must be his fault. Yeah, and they kind of turn on him. And at one point, he even basically offers to just commit suicide for them if you think it'll help. Yeah, the the bit I found interesting was um, when they turned on him. He was like, "Hey, you all accepted. You didn't have to. You came for the same reason everyone else did because you felt obligated to." And 
again the, the, these conventions that even before they got here it was no this is an invitation we can't turn this down yeah yeah uh i'm the sort of person of course who gets an invitation like ah uh, no i'm i'm, I'm doing something. sure now <laughs> but, you know back <laughs> then in rich society I oh feel sure like, sure like, that's yeah. definitely an obligation but yeah, they're obsessed with keeping up appearances and keeping up this, and they're very like uh, like shallow and gossipy. Like that, like three of the men are like debating if one of the girls they don't know that well is a virgin, and they they, they bring it up endlessly, and it's like this big point for them, and it doesn't really yeah. goddamn matter. But it shows how vain they are, how how like how they approach things. Even at first, when they judge the guy for taking off the jacket, because <laughs> they're like, "Oh, he can't do that. What what earth's he doing?" I think the head servant been in there with them is an interesting thing, because he's not there at first. He comes in with the uh, the the tray Food. of yeah the, the breakfast basically in the morning, and then he can't leave either. And it's almost like uh, it, it, it's kind of like that character, like the enabler, who like when you have like a sort of uh, I'm not, I always compare it to Handmaid's Tale because we've been watching that recently. Uh, I could also compare it to know, anything where there's like a like an oppressed people, but you have the the, the the oppressed one who's like higher ranking that they f- make feels more important. So he feels this sense of importance because he's like, oh, I'm I'm more important than the rest of the yeah, other people. Yeah, like that, that's that's how I took it. Why he's yeah. in there? He was more righteous than the other the the actual working. Yeah, because at the start of the movie, he he's grilling the other people for leaving. He's pissed at them. He's like, no, this is important. We've got a job yeah, to do. And and he feels like he has importance in this yeah. house, and and he's he almost placed himself up with the rest of yeah. them, even though they don't look at him that way. But as a result, he's enabling their their society. He's enabling what they yes. do by saying it's okay from his perspective, and that's why he deserves to be in there. Oh, it does. It's interesting how that plays into the the end. No, they, they, they figure out like repeating the, the 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 night they all stayed there. Like they all say, "Oh, we're all in the same place." Except, well, he's not. The servant wasn't here. Yeah, and obviously you got the two that were dead, and the two that were dead, of course. Three. Three. Yeah, one guy died yeah. of old age. Yeah. And the couple who committed suicide, uh, yeah, and also the, they mentioned the smell at one point, which I was like, oh yes, right, they're, they're, they're like shitting in the in the closet with like yeah. a, with some vases I, or whatever. The, the, I found it really interesting the the, the description they were talking of like uh, the toilets, mm. you know, like oh like it's it's like a cliff, yeah, <laughs> like, and it's like, like and it's like a, a big river and stuff. It's like oh this is this is weird. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's going for that sort of bigger, you know, biblical imagery that ties yeah. into the themes kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but no, that, that was no. I, I I liked that a lot. It was. I did too. I, I think if I had complaints, it is that there's too many characters, uh, or at least too many characters that I didn't completely remember from scene to scene. Like they were just kind of there in the background and kind of thing. And because of that, I felt like the opening. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, like before it really started to get to the meat of what it was about. Mm. Where, you know, it's just, it was, it was, it took a while to get into it because of that. Like, the setup of the servants leaving was, was fine, but then once we got to the dinner table, it felt like there was a lot of separate conversations happening and I was kind of following it, but it was dotting yeah, around. It, it was things like, because this is where we got a lot of the repeating bits. Like, mm. you know, when they all come in and then you see the servants, they go to leave and they're like, oh no, they've gone upstairs now. So they look out and then they're coming in again. And then uh, when they're at the dinner table, I think he toasts and then he toasts again or something. Yeah, like he, that. St- he stands up to say it again and then he realises he said it already. It, he? Yeah, yeah. It was those bits that were in these early sections that were keeping me interested. It's like, okay, something's going on. This is interesting to me. And that was just about enough to keep me going till it got to the real stuff during yeah. these uh, less just, interesting conversations. It was the dinner table stuff, and then the actual like night in the the parlor before it, you know, before they yeah. woke up and they realized we can't leave, uh, kind of thing. That that was when it. But I, I love the simplicity of the idea, though. Like just it's just people who, for some reason, for some unknown reason, they can't just leave. Yeah, and I like that it doesn't just tell you that why they can't leave. There's no, you know, and it's more interesting that way for me. Oh yeah, yeah, the the speculation, the, the theorizing, the talking about it. I think because of the title, like it's it's called the Exterminating Angel for a reason. Because I don't yes. think there's anything else in the plot that would lead to that name. No, no, I was paying attention once I realized that you know I was, it, it it makes you think. Okay, there's either something that you've got to look for, or there is an outside force doing this to them. This angel. That, yeah. That's kind of what the title implies. And yeah. so I was looking for something else, and I, I couldn't see anything. Yeah, so I I think that's maybe the obvious thing to go with. 
Uh, and I'm sure there's. I, I think this is a movie where there's probably a lot of different interpretations. Maybe maybe not the core themes, but it's certainly of like what certain things mean, what mm. and and all that kind of thing. Uh, like I suppose, I mean, like the the horror scene, like the horror dream sequence with the hand, where she almost stabs the uh, other person's hand because she's like sort of sleepwalking almost with the knife. Yeah. Uh, like I, I like what does that hand represent? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I, I got like obviously the hand kind of came in. It was literally choking her, trying to choke her. And I was yeah, like, oh, yeah. she she feels choked and oppressed by these conventions that to the point that it's driving her to this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it was just it was just why is that a severed hand though? It was so. Yeah, I guess that was just because it was a creepy imagery for me. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, hand itself. That's... That's the idea I, I got well I, I thought i got what it represented but the imagery itself just well maybe eh, it's something creepy it's a nightmare maybe it's because it's if it's representing the social like like this the social demands right yeah it's not really a person there's no actual entity so it's an invisible force with just a hand because it's choking mm. yeah okay oh uh, i'm going off what you just said that's that's maybe what where i'd go with that hey better than having nothing yeah. Well, that's exactly what it has. It has nothing but a hand. <laughs> Very good. Uh, but no, it's a, no I, I liked it a lot. It, it was, yeah, uh, me too. Like, like I say, it's, it's very much a, a conceptual movie rather than like a traditional like character arc movie. Because obviously, I mean, I, like, I would argue that even have arcs. I mean, they realise obviously how to get out and they sort of kind of understand that yeah but we don't see them learn anything we no. don't see any uh results we don't see if they change anything because of this no. and I, I think i think in that sense it's not a film that wants to show you that because it wants to show us what yeah. these conventions are doing to people and keeping people on their own classes and keeping them all lot separate and not thinking about things in other ways not trying to like extend yourself it's showing you the dangers of that it's not necessarily trying to tell a character story, and typically that would be a problem. Like typically, most movies, if it didn't have the, something like that at the core of it, that'd be a difficult thing to swallow. But uh, this is clearly a well-crafted kind of uh, almost parable, I think. Yeah, you, you, you've got to have someone who really knows what they're doing to tell a story like this and make it work. Yeah, uh, it's actually the second movie I've seen from uh, Louis Bunnell, uh, or I probably butchered the pronunciation of his name there. Uh, Belle de Jour is a pretty good movie. I've seen that too. Uh, as far as I'm aware, this is the the first of his works that I've seen. Uh, that's a movie about a, a sort of regular sort of middle class woman who decides to become a upper class uh, hooker, basically. Mm. Uh, it was a good movie. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, but no, I I like this one. Uh, so I guess we should get to ratings. Mm. What would you rate the Exterminate Angel out of ten? Uh, I think I'm going to go with an 8.5. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to go just a smidge lower and go with a straight 8. Okay. Just a straight 8, just because I think because it is... That's almost like a, a really bad uh, complaint, and I don't mean it to be, but it is very textbook-like. And yes. that it, it's like it's not like we say it's not a character you attach to and you don't feel the emotional connection. It's more like this ob- observation. It's like a it's like a it's like a really smart tone poem almost. And because of that, it, you view it differently. And I, I think for like a lot of modern audiences, like they would get through ten minutes of this and go, "Oh God, no." Uh, yeah definitely I, I get what you're saying there and yeah. it was just i think uh, i really enjoyed the, the ideas and you know deconstructing as i was watching it and i think that's what just kept me going with that and I, I you, mean, you've got to know what you get in for though i can see it going up on my like on repeat viewings and it's definitely mm. something that looks like it could benefit from repeat viewings uh but I, as i'm gonna give it a solid eight for obvious, all the obvious reasons we've discussed uh but i'm just gonna not put it up too highly just because there is no like straight connection to the characters, and because of that, it's not like I wouldn't say it's tense or anything like that. No, it's more fascinating. Yeah, that, I think that was the key word I used at the yeah. start, wasn't it? And yeah, I, I definitely think that is the key word for me. I was just fascinated watching it and understanding this, seeing this unravel as yeah. it went along. But that does come with a, an element of detachment. It does indeed. So yeah. you know, uh, but there you go. That, that's uh, the exterminating angel. Uh, so yeah uh, it's also worth mentioning this will be the first one that went up early for Patreon uh, which is weird talking about this because the Patreon is not launched for us yet we're recording this slightly in advance but 
uh, yeah, so if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you can support us on Patreon if you want to do that. We would love it a lot. Obviously, just watching stuff helps out as well. But one of the perks is uh, for even just $1, you get uh, this a week early. Now you get Influx a week early. So uh, you also get to vote uh, every month on a bonus episode for what movie we talk about. So if that interests you, you can check that out too. But uh, yeah, uh, but otherwise, of course, guys, uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff, comment, let us know what you thought of the movie, all that stuff helps, every single bit of it. So do all that. Uh, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. Uh, I'm at Wibble89 on Twitter, Connor's at ConnorRyan94. So get us on there. Uh, but that's us, guys. So thanks for watching. Keep watching movies, and we'll see you next time.